Hello, I am Steven Kill 2 and you will now watch me play this. Yes, that sounds about right. First things first, set your settings to whatever you want, yada yada yada. Single player, my character name is going to be ba -da -ba 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 Steven Kill 2 and my robot's name will be Kronos. On we go. Loading, 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 loading. So, okay, there's Kronos. We're gonna get him away for now and start resource, uh, getting some starting resources. So let's see. I have eight gigs of DDR3 RAM and a quad-core processor, 3.42 gigahertz, and this is using 42% of my RAM and 40% of my processing power. That's a hell of a lot. Dungeon Siege 3 only used 10%. Wow. Okay, getting some resources. You're going to want lots of wood to fend off the forces of chaos, like the snake and the porcupine that you still can't hit right. Behold how my stick goes through them and nothing happens, because you have to actually put your cursor in front of your little character and then click them a second away, and then look at the ridiculous knockback. Ah, you frizzer. Oh, come on. So yeah, best of luck. It's not nice. The stick only hits one enemy, whereas hammers will hit two, so you're going to want to make a hammer as soon as possible. It's just the best course of action. Oh, come on. I want my hammer and my crossbow. Yeah, there was just a local reset recently, so everyone's got to start from scratch again. And there's some tools. Not really some tools, some supplies. The inventory space in this isn't too big, so you're going to want to um, compress most of your supplies into smaller supplies if possible, when possible. The spawn points of items on hills must be fixed. Either they spawn in the dirt or they spawn above the dirt. Do, 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 do. Let's see. So we're going to just gather some resources and start making some other resources to get more complex resources to make sources of resource. If you understood that. Now we're going to be exploring the underground in hopes that we'll find some of the good stuff. You might be wondering what some of the good stuff is. Well, there's some of it right there. It's copper. And gold and platinum and all the other goodies. You're going to want the goodies. In this game, you need a lot of supplies to live. And you're going to die a lot at first. But you will get by. If anyone sees any bugs that I'm not seeing while I'm playing, feel free to report them. Um, yeah, I miss things sometimes. It's to be expected. So we're just going to cruise on down here. And the robot takes a lot of fall damage. It's going to die. Oh, he lived. And we got copper. I need to build a propeller ASAP. A propeller is what will keep your robot alive in the long run. I kind of wish that fall damage wasn't so tense. Intense. I'm sorry, I'm really tired. Oh, I've died. And that's death. That's what happens. If you restart and you're confused as to where your robot is, it'll spawn under the ground. And he died. Um, yeah, and you're going to want to unsummon and resummon your robot. You can't see it right now, but if you fall a long distance, your clothes start to bag up and your little guy starts screaming in terror. It's hilarious. Let's see if it happens here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of damage from falling. You probably shouldn't even explore a cave until you're better prepared. Oh, shit. Whoops, excuse my language. Snail. Scourge of the Earth. The monster spawns are absolutely heinous. There is a million monsters, and you're going to want defensibles as soon as possible. 
Don't even try placing anything that'll need power without either the giant hulking windmill of no power or the steam thing that everyone needs. Yeah, the steam thing's pretty useful. But unless you have ample ways, I wouldn't make even make the steam thing until you have the defense prepared because they're just going to come and tear it down. I believe uh, Scalero right now is raging because they keep tearing down his crafting table. It's not good times. And what is it? Even crafting table. The crafting table requires a disgusting amount of wood. I believe it's 60. you got to collect 60 natural resources before you can make your crafting table. Let me just verify that. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. The crafting table... Oh my god. Scratch that. You need to get 120 wood off the ground before you can craft this bad boy out. Yeah. It's uh, good times. Um, silk is pretty impossible to get, too. So if you need silk for anything, you're kind of beat. Um, yeah. Things are really expensive. Hopefully that'll get scaled down for playtesting, because we can't really test anything if we can't make anything. I'm going to die again. It's going to happen. My little robot's almost dead already. Fall damage is ridiculous. Oh, there it goes. This shouldn't even be called playtesting. It should be called death because I suck at Epic Inventor and I will die over and over and over. But thank God res sickness is gone. So we're going to collect some wood and try and make something useful perhaps live a little longer but I doubt it because everything on this map is out to kill you everything including that giant walrus his little snail friend oh. even the snake no one wants to be your friend on this map except Kronos he's the only one I can trust can't even resource. Uh, sorry, once again, I'm really tired. Go on, Kronos. Ah, Kronos, you failed me. Oh, harvest some rock, get some more rock. Yeah, I find it really annoying that when the zo um, sorry, when your robot jumps in the air and comes back down, it receives fall damage. There's so many monsters, I can hardly get these resources, and it takes at least an hour to kill one monster. It's ridiculous. I know it sounds like I'm complaining a lot, but I can't even hardly resource or uh, collect resources half the time because, as you can see, nice little uh, flying lion spawns, and then it'll take me, what, five minutes to kill that, and while I'm killing that, Mr. Snail comes along. See, and once a flying lion follows you, you're done. They're so fast that you can't even re get any resources unless you run as far as possible. So, uh, yeah, Epic Inventor World is a harsh world filled with many dangers. And uh, you're not going to get a lot. Just a bunch of monsters are going to kill you. And your task is to survive while collecting all this and knocking stuff away with your stick and maybe once you finally forge a weapon after well you can't even really run through the underground to get stuff anymore because of fall damage now so you're going to die at least 15 to 20 times before you get something remotely useful it's gonna happen yeah um... is it okay resource spawn rates were increased greatly and uh... That's great, but monsters spawn like this, and you can't collect them anyway, so it's the same as... Yeah, I'm gonna die again. It's the same as when there were hardly any resources due to the giant amount of monsters. It is really hard to get by in this world. Once you do start getting stuff, it becomes a lot easier because you get to live longer and forage more and get out there and get what you actually need to get. But in the beginning, it's just very tedious and hard. It's it's hard to do anything. Um, 
slingshot, I wouldn't suggest investing in that. It's quite useless for being cheap. It does four or five damage. You would need to hit something at least. What is it? A snail has 180 HP, five damage. You gotta hit that snail 38 times with that slingshot, and by that time you've already got four other monsters on you. You haven't gotten any resources, and you're just running for your life if you haven't jumped off a cliff and killed yourself by now. Um, yeah. So, the best thing you could do is first create a few defensive placeables, and then get a source of power if you don't die. Um, I really feel that the starting area should be expanded a little bit more to somewhere out of here. So you can just put down a few more defensive placeables in your starting area. I feel that a starting area should be bigger than a few more areas you find within. Um, as I said, my robot dies from me jumping over enemies. I'm going to go try and find some copper because I'm not going to survive without copper. I'm just going to keep dying. But these drop-offs are so heinous. Um, I think there needs to be like a rope or some type of thing that lets you slow fall before you get the propeller, lets you climb down at like maybe 50% your movement speed, just so you don't take fall damage now that it's been properly in implemented. So yeah, oh, see, like right here, you just know you're going to take fall damage, and my little guy's going to scream and then take like half his health, and then I'm going to have to waste bread. Yeah, nice. Now here, I don't even want to jump off this, so I gotta hurt Kronos. Kronos gets hurt, 70%. It's not good times. It is a lot of fall damage. Kronos killed himself. Brandon, Weem, and Forrest, the creators of this game. And there is nothing good in this cave. Damn you, Weem. I gotta climb up Forrest or something somehow. No, get back here. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Aha! I have become one with Forrest. Now, as you can see, uh, like I said before, they'll only follow you on an x-axis. They won't try and get up to you at any way or anything. They won't jump towards you. They won't try to climb. I think AI needs to be updated with a y-axis, uh, with tracking for the y-axis as well. Otherwise, yeah. And I died. So, my suggestion is to nerf fall damage. Or make a parachute. Or something. Just something that makes you fall slower. I'm going to end my first Let's Play here until I finally get some items. And I can finally start doing something useful instead of dying. See ya.